So for our next proof, um, I'm going to prove to you our product rule that we learned a little while back. So I'm going to prove to you that the derivative of f of x times g of x is equal to f of x times g prime of x plus, got some more lag. Once again, um, my computer has lag whenever school's not in session. So these videos are going to be a little bit slow. And so just you can always find a fast forward button somewhere on the YouTube so you can make it go a little faster if you want to. Plus f prime of x times g of x. So I'm going to prove the product rule to you guys. Okay. Um, so before I do that proof, let's go ahead and once again, let's look at some background. The background for this one will not be as in depth as the last one, and usually they won't. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the background for this. So first of all, I want you guys to be aware that if you have a number and you add zero to it, right, that's the same thing as just that number was originally, right? A plus zero equals A. You guys also agree that one way that you can have a zero is if you have two numbers that are the same being subtracted. So you guys agree that this is still true, right? A plus B minus B equals A, right? So that we're going to use that little cheating trick here. It's going to seem like a real... Um, ninja move that comes out of nowhere, but it actually is what makes this proof work. Um, we're going to take what we have, we're going to add a number to it, but we're also going to subtract a number from it so it doesn't really change what it was. Okay, it looks different, but it doesn't actually change the value. So that's the background for this particular proof. Once again, we are proving the product rule that the derivative of f of x times g of x is equal to what you see on the right there. All right, so let's go ahead and get down to business here. Once again, and when you do your proof um, on the test, you don't need to include the background notes. But um, whenever you're taking your notes, I would like you to write down the notes for the background. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's say that I have a function h of x, right? And h of x is actually a product of two other functions, f of x and g of x. You got some lag. All right. So what we want to prove is what h prime of x is, all right? Now h prime of x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 for the difference quotient, h of Got some lag. H of x plus delta x minus h of x over delta x. Okay. So now, h, as you remember, is really the product of two other functions. <clears throat> so, the derivative of h prime of x, then, can be rewritten like this. Instead of h of x plus delta x, 
um, we can have f of x plus delta x. times g of x plus delta x, right? Because h of x is just h f times g. So h of x plus delta x is f of x plus delta x times g of x plus delta x. Minus, of course, f of x times g of x, which is our h of x function. All over delta x. Okay, now it's time for the ninja move that I shared with you guys in the background. I'm going to add zero to this, so I'm not going to really change what it equals, but it certainly is going to change the way it looks. So I'm going to leave this first thing here as is. Probably going to end up running out of space here. So I'm going to start writing tiny. And this is where I'm going to add in the new thing. Ready? I am going to put minus f of x plus delta x. Oh, I'm running out of space. Frustrating. Times g of x. And then I'm going to add that same amount. So as you guys can see, I've subtracted f of x plus delta x times g of x, and I've added f of x plus delta x times g of x, which means that green part there, since I'm adding and subtracting the same amount, is actually 0. So I didn't really put anything new in the equation. It just looks like I did, right? So um, the rest of the equation was minus f of x g of x. So um, I'm going to go ghetto here and start writing vertically because I'm out of space. Um, and I'm not writing all that again, especially with this lag. So hopefully you guys can make yours look nicer than mine. All right. So now why would we want to do that? Well, you know, it helps if you kind of know where you're trying to go with it, which the person who came up with this proof probably did. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to group some of these terms together. Show you what I mean. Okay, I'm going to group this first expression here with the second expression. Which, by the way, when you guys do your proof, if you just want to do this up front, instead of writing the step, just kind of group them all at once. Save yourself an extra step. I don't mind. Got some lag. There we go. So I'm going to group the first expression highlight these in green, like so. And then I'm going to group the second two expressions there. So that would be this one here, where I added the f of x plus delta x g of x, and the last part. Once again, we'll put some brackets there. All over delta x. 
Now that I've grouped them, I'm going to factor out what each group has in common. Okay, so if you look at this first group here, see if you can figure out what they have in common while I write the rest of this stuff. Okay, so this first set here has f of x plus delta x and f of x plus delta x in common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that out of each of these portions. And so if I do that, I end up with the following. f of x plus delta x has, is going to now be factored out, right? If I factor that out, what will be left, I'll, I'll keep the green parentheses for now. If I factor that out, this g of x plus delta x will remain. And minus g of x will remain for this portion. Right? Plus, we're going to continue that for this other portion over here now. What do these two portions have in common? They both have a g of x in common. So I'm going to factor out a g of x. Guess I'll be consistent here and make that g of x red. So if I take out that g of x out of this expression, I'll be left with f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And all this is still over delta x. Okay. Next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to take these two groups of factored expressions and I'm going to split them up into separate fractions. Okay. Now I could put this whole thing over delta x, but I could also write it like this, <clears throat> where I only put it over that part. It actually is an equivalent expression, and it's okay to write it either way. So I'm going to write it like this, and there's a reason for that. Um, let's go ahead and do this other half over here. Now I'm going to put a big plus in the middle. We have g of x, and same thing, I'm going to put the delta x just under the green part there. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my limit here using the properties of limits. Since I have two pieces now, you don't need to box this on your notes. I'm just doing this for teaching. But I've got two different pieces here. Right? And I'm going to apply this limit to both separately. Whenever you're taking a limit and you have two separate expressions, you can just take the limit of each one separately. So if I write that, then it will look like the following.
Okay. Um, now, we're ready to apply our limits. Okay. So here, I'm just going to do direct substitution with this f of x plus delta x. If I do that, the delta x goes away, right? Just zero, and you're left with f of x. If I apply this limit to this piece, well, guys, look at this. This is kind of cool. Do you guys recognize that that is a difference quotient for the g function? g of x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x. In other words, the limit of this difference quotient as delta x approaches 0 is the derivative of g. Crazy, huh? And then, over here, since there's nowhere to plug delta x in here, so it only has an x, it doesn't have a delta x, that g of x stays exactly the same. But here, if I apply my limit to this, as you guys might notice, this is a difference quotient, where if you take the limit of it as delta x approaches 0, gives you the derivative of f. And there you have it. We are done. I just proved that the derivative of a product function gives us this, um, and that's the product rule, and it involves that little ninja trick that I showed you in the beginning where you add and subtract the same quantity, and it just so happens that you got to know what quantity that is. I never would have thought of that myself, uh, honestly. That's something that's um, just a standard move that's kind of been shared down the ages. So anyway, that's the product rule. Next one is the quotient rule. So.